Hey there, Sam Mosey here. This week I'm doing some repairs and upgrades on this van. This isn't a van that I originally built out, but it's one I've done some work on in the past. Now something interesting and frankly pretty bad happened with this van is part of the upper cabinet totally fell off the wall and the rest of the upper cabinet, the longer section, is still on the wall, but is started to split away. Of the things that can fail on a van build out, this is probably one of the ones that you really don't want to have happen. So I thought it'd be interesting to look at how the builder constructed these cabinets and what I think caused them to fail. And then the rest of the video will follow along as I repair this cabinet section and then do a little bit of preventative reinforcement on the longer upper cabinet section. Let's go. I think there were three main things that led to this cabinet failing. The first is that it was only fastened to the wall and not fastened to the wall and the ceiling. Typically when you'd mount an upper cabinet, you would put some fasteners or bolts. Here it was screwed in um, using plus nuts and bolting them in is even better, but typically you'd have it going into both the wall and some supports in the ceiling. In this case, it was only fastened into the wall, which like in a house is fine, but in a van that's bouncing down the road, I don't think it's a smart decision. When you can anchor it down from two sides, both the wall and the ceiling, you're just gonna limit any potential movement of that cabinet as the van is bouncing around and that's gonna limit the possibility of fasteners working and breaking loose like what happened here. I think the second issue was the direction of the fasteners. So this back plate that was holding it against the wall had brad nails that came directly out this way. And this top piece had brad nails that went directly down. So in both these cases, the nails were oriented in the direction of the forces acting on the cabinet rather than perpendicular to that force. I think this will make more sense if I draw it out on paper, so I'll show that now. If the top panel sits over the side panel, then the nail goes through the top. This orients the nail the same way as the force of gravity pulling down on the cabinet and makes it easier for the cabinet to pull apart. A better construction is to locate the top and bottom panels inside the side panels so the fasteners go in horizontally. Then as downward forces act against the cabinet, the fastener is better able to resist to that rather than pulling apart. While I can't fix this without totally rebuilding the cabinet, I will add screws which at least have a higher pullout resistance. The third thing that I think was working against these cabinets is that the doors were a little too tall. And the top of the door here is actually touching the ceiling. Now when you open the door, that front point actually goes further up and pushes into the ceiling. And what's happening is it's actually acting as a lever and you can see as you open the door, it's putting downward pressure right here on the top front edge of the corner of the cabinet. And again, since it's not secured into the ceiling, we're just pulling on those fasteners at the back. And it's probably more so just from the weight of the cabinet bouncing up and down with no upward support holding it up as much as it is from these doors. But I don't think the doors were helping. If I were to add a fourth thing, it'd be that only glue and brad nails were used rather than screws. Glue and brads can be pretty strong, but here, in addition to the other issues, glue and brad nails didn't cut it. I'll address as many of these things as possible in the repair. To get started, I removed the still attached back panel of the rear cabinet section. Next, I took off all the doors from the main upper cabinet. I'm going to fully remove this section in order to reinforce it so what happened to the back section doesn't repeat, and then reinstall it. Once the doors were off, I disconnected some switches and wiring inside and then removed the screws holding it to the wall. I'll take this cabinet inside for the rest of the work. Upon closer inspection, I really couldn't tell if this back section was actually splitting away or if it had always been like this from sloppy construction. The back edge of the top panel wasn't beveled to match the back, so this panel couldn't have sat flush to begin with. As I reconstruct it, I'll make a bevel cut across this top section to address this and allow a better fit when I glue it back together. The smaller cabinet section looked the same. Here was the connection that fully came apart. I started working on the large cabinet section first, beginning with prying off the back panel. I used a utility knife to score along the edges and then worked my way down with a couple of skinny pry bars. In the spots where there was good contact for the glue, it held together fairly well. But still, the panel came off without too much fuss. I used a pair of end nippers to pull out the brad nails. I find these to be one of the better tools for pulling out small nails. But you do have to be careful not to squeeze too hard or you'll just cut the nail in half. 
Most of the nails pulled through the back panel when prying it off, but some stayed in the back panel and I removed those the same. I used a sander and a scraper to clean up this back panel, paying particular attention to the areas where the glue would be going. Now, I used an angle finder to measure the angle between the top and back. I used this angle to set the table saw blade so that I could bevel this top edge to allow the back panel to sit flat and have a more solid glue joint. After checking that the blade and fence was positioned right, I ran the whole cabinet through the table saw to trim the edge. Here's what the edge looked like after the cut. Much better. After this, I used a scraper to clean up all the back edges of the cabinet. I was trying to remove glue residue and any other inconsistencies along the back edge to get a clean edge for re-gluing the back panel onto. After it was cleaned up, I test fit the back panel. Next, I spread my glue onto the edge. I used a thicker Gorilla Glue on the bottom edge since this one won't make as good of contact and I used normal wood glue on the remaining edges. With the glue spread, I put the back panel on and then nailed it in place. So why use brad nails if brad nails failed here before? Well, I think brad nails are great for getting the back panel aligned and holding things tight while the glue is setting up. Once I get the nails in, I'll come back and add screws for additional strength. First though, I flipped it over to clean up any glue squeeze out. Now for those screws. I first pre-drilled a hole with a countersink bit and then added my screws. I repeated this into each vertical section. I didn't add screws along the top and bottom as the angle of the cabinet would make it difficult to get screws in with how it was built. There are brad nails on those sections though and with the screws going into the vertical sections I think that provides enough reinforcement. I cleaned up the edges with some sandpaper and then turned it right side up. I went ahead and added screws to the top as well. While the joints at the top seemed like they had been holding up fine, I figured I might as well while I could. I couldn't do this on the bottom as the screws would be visible, but the top is against the ceiling so you won't be able to see any of these. That was it for this cabinet section. Now I can set it aside and work on the smaller section. The process was pretty similar for the smaller cabinet section, starting by pulling out the brad nails and cleaning up the edges of the back panel. I noticed something on this panel that may have also contributed to it breaking apart. I think a piece of pre-finished plywood had been used here. The back of it clearly had a smooth factory pre-finished coating on it, and I think the front panel too, but I couldn't tell 100% for the front since it had other finish added on top. If it was pre-finished plywood on this side, that may explain why the glue didn't stick as well. I worked the perimeter of the panel with a sander to get back to bare wood so the glue could get a proper grip on the wood. Next, I needed to rejoin the cabinet where the top and side meet. To get it prepared, I pulled the nails out and then spread glue on the surface. While working on this joint, I tried not to pull it apart too far as I didn't want to stress the other corners of the box. I used clamps to hold it in place and nailed it together. I'll add screws later, but for now I'm going to set it aside while the glue dries and work on trimming the tops of all the doors. The tops of the doors could all use a bit of extra clearance against the ceiling. But with where the hinges are located, I can only trim them so much before it would interfere with the hinge location. I set up the table saw blade at a slight angle so the outer edge would get more trimmed off as this is the point making the most contact with the ceiling. I set up the saw to cut as close as I could to the hinge hole without cutting into it. After checking the alignment, I made the full cut and then repeated on the rest of the doors. After this, I returned to the small cabinet. The glue had set up enough by this point that I could remove the clamps and set up to trim the top panel. Same here as I did on the other cabinet section. I reset up the saw and cut just slightly into it, then pulled it back and checked the cut before doing the full pass. After this, I cleaned up the edges with a block plane. I had grabbed the block plane instead of the scraper here because one of the corners needed to be flattened out a little bit, but it worked better for removing the glue residue anyway. After the edge was good to go, I spread the glue, put the back panel in place, secured it with nails, pre-drilled for screws, then added screws. Once again, adding screws to not just the back, but also the top for extra strength. At this point, the cabinet was ready to reinstall. I started with the big cabinet and got it positioned back inside the van. Prior to this, I used tape to mark where the supports in the ceiling are, so I can also screw the cabinet into the ceiling. I used some helping hands and clamps to hold it roughly in place. Then I added a screw on one end. 
I wanted to get the cabinet in the same spot it was before, so I used the previous screw holes for alignment. After getting one end aligned, I repeated on the other end, and then added more screws to hold it up. Same thing for the back section. Before adding all the screws though, I put one door on to make sure everything still fit, as it seemed like the cabinet was sitting tighter to the ceiling than it did before. The door was fitting fine, so I pulled it back off for now. For some extra reinforcement, I added a couple screws to connect the two cabinet sections together at their side panels. Then, I re-added all the screws going into the back wall. The final original issue to address was to add additional screws through the cabinet and into the ceiling supports at the locations I marked. I used wood shims cut to the right thickness at each screw location as there was a little gap between the top of the cabinet and the ceiling. Now the cabinet is anchored to the ceiling as well as the wall. The final things to wrap this up was to put the doors back on and get them aligned, re-add the gas struts, and then reconnect some switches and wires inside the cabinet, and then it was all put back together. Here it is. Inside the door here, we can see one of the screws going into the ceiling furring and rib. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching.